With the Planet Fitness Black Card, you don't just get a great workout, you get a great perk out. Because your membership is packed with perks. For $1 down and $24.99 a month, you'll get perks like access to any of our 2,400 clean and spacious locations. Bring your friend anytime and both work out with tons of equipment that'll give you that big fitness energy. Relax in the Black Card Spa and more. Work out and perk out with the PF Black Card. Join for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Join the Judgment Free Zone today. Deal ends Thursday, August 10th. See Home Club for details. Welcome to Mom and Dad are Fighting Slate's Parenting Podcast for Thursday, August 3rd, the Perfectionist Parent Edition. I'm Zach Rosen. I host another podcast. It's called The Best Advice Show. I'm the dad to Noah, who is almost six, and Ami, who's almost three. We live in Detroit. I'm Dwayne Richards. I have two daughters, Emiko, who's 12, Reiko, who is 10. I have a puppy named Biscuit who just turned three and is sitting in my lap right now. We live in Los Angeles, Aww. California. Hola, I'm Lucy Lopez, and I'm happy to be back again. I host the Mamacita Rica podcast. I'm la mama to Amelia, who is 13, Avery, who is 10, and we live in Miami, Florida. Welcome back, Lucy. Dween, welcome. Biscuit, welcome. It is so good <laughs> to be with you today. We're going to start today's show by sharing our biggest parenting triumphs and fails of the week. Then we've got a parent coming to terms with the fact that their kid, unlike them, is not an exceptional student. How should this recovering perfectionist proceed? Then if you're sticking around for Slate Plus, we're talking about playground design and why the 21st century playground needs to account for the changing experience of childhood itself. Here's what you'll hear if you have Slate Plus. Avery said to me, uh, you know what they need more of? And I'm like, what's that, buddy? She's like, "We they need more of that tire foam pavement. And I don't know. Oh, I love if that. I love that. She, stuff. She's like, it should be everywhere. Not only do you get a whole extra segment each week, but as a Slate Plus member, you'll also get to listen to this show ad free. No interruptions. It's also what keeps the lights on around here. So please join if you can. You can sign up for Slate Plus now at slate.com slash mom and dad plus. All right, we're going to catch up on our week in parenting as soon as we get back from this short break. So, Dween, do you have a parenting triumph or fail you feel like sharing? I do, Zach. Um, I'm going to keep it positive. I'm going to go with a triumph. Nice. So... I have two daughters that I mentioned, 12 and 10, and they both got invited to this exclusive basketball camp for the top 100 kids in their age range in the nation. Whoa. So, Amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So they are going to be balling out starting Thursday in Southern California and I played basketball in college, so you can imagine how wow. happy this is for me. I just, I'm so stoked for them. And we'll see how they stack up against the best of the best. So that was my big, and I can't really take a ton of credit for that. I mean, I just happened to. Well, your genes, Ken. Yeah, the, the genes, the DNA happened to play a little bit of a role, but a lot of it was intrinsic work on their end to be the best players they can be. So I'm so happy to be a basketball dad and support them. So you're not like the ball father. You're not like that guy. <laughs> oh, oh, like a <laughs> LeVar ball. No, I'm yeah. not that dude. Okay. Uh, because it's like, it's no one likes that guy. No one likes that guy. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just try to just show up and just be like that dad in the background. I used to be a youth coach back in the day and I used to hate the parents who were like so overbearing. So I'm like, I'm not going to be that dude. I'm just going to cheer on my kid. And I'll curse them in silence when they make mistakes. So that's kind of what it is. That's amazing. <laughs> Are they bringing in like Coach K or like some big time coaches or players to motivate the kids? No, not not like that level of like legendary Hall of Fame coaching. But they do have coaches and scouts from all over the nation. So listen, Zach, if I can wow. get my kids to get a free college education yeah. by putting an orange ball through a, <laughs> a, a hoop, I'm here for it. So, let, I mean, y'all seen these college prices on these streets. I mean, it's crazy. It's too much. So, but they enjoy it. That's the main thing. They love it. They love it. And I don't have to force them to practice or do anything like that. So that's a really huge benefit. What a beautiful thing. Congratulations. It's pretty you, solid. Sir. Lucy, do your kids play sports? <laughs> Thank you. My children do not play sports. Well, 
actually my el- oldest one is um really into football because of because of my husband uh but if it were up to me i i just wasn't into sports growing up was more of an artsy kid mm-hmm. um but yeah she tried out for flag football last year didn't make it but the journey of it all really showed me what kind of young lady i hope she becomes which is one that never gives up so yeah oh, nice. that's yeah. that's the closest i got to sports was the audition process which was insane mm-hmm. yeah um yeah it is yeah that was that was a triumph a long time ago and if if i can speak on my fail of my parenting fail this week please do please i'd, I'd like to make someone laugh um Hit it. so we introduced my 13 year old <laughs> To our summer guilty pleasure, which is the Bachelorette. Please don't judge me, guys. But here's I'm why. Not saying it's a, anything. Okay. <laughs> I'm after, thinking something, but I'm not saying. It. I'm just kidding. I really. After one I, ep- I don't. It's fine. It's great. Have fun. After one episode, she had a lot of questions about dating. We got a lot of why is this Bachelorette needing all that validation? Isn't her own accomplishments enough? (laughs) She turned to me and she goes, is this where humanity is headed to? Mm. And then gave us a look, gave me and my husband this look that I can only describe as, my gosh, you guys just lost a grip of cool points. And it was (laughs) it was just fantastic. But. But, you know, with every fail, there's a win, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, she promised us that she would never, ever go on a reality show to find true love. I mean, it sounds like your daughter was asking all the right questions. <laughs> yes, which my husband which just is a kept triumph. Like, it was a It was a total triumph, but I also felt like a failure, like... Oh my gosh! What am I doing? What am I doing? We should, we should, we should hit stop. We should hit stop because yeah, of course we record it. And um, my husband's like, "What are we doing? Everything we've ever taught this child, we just went back like thirty steps." I'm like, "No, she's allowed to know about silly things in life, and this is one of those silly things that mommy enjoys to watch." She sat there and she would just look at me and be like, "She's gonna kiss everybody." I'm like, "Just not. No, we could fast forward through this." Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, by the way, I followed your advice from last week um, where I showed Noah a great movie from my youth. Together, we watched The Parent Trap, the newer one, the Nancy Myers one with Lindsay Lohan. That's the fantastic. How best. did it That's go? That's such a good movie. What was the reaction? Were... She loved it. They makes loved her excited it. Okay, to go to camp. Aww. She is practicing her British accent. She knows what a vineyard is now. That Only good things came from it. So the movie we caught up with l- this week, Sunday night, we watched uh, Back to the Future Part 2. So good. My kid was sitting back and was like, they predicted the Marlins would win. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, honey, yes. Uh, that's a whole other thing. But yes, yeah, so I'm so happy you guys tried that out. It's great. It's great. Um, well, I have, I don't know what to call this. I guess it's a triumph and a fail. But last week I told you that Noah had, I had just dropped Noah off for her first day of this new camp and i figured okay it'll take a a couple days for her to get adjusted and then she'll be fine but frankly every day last week we dropped her off she was so sad and it made shira my wife and i so sad just to like sorry go go and be here for eight hours and try to have fun like you know i (laughs) hugged her a lot and like i stayed there for 10 15 minutes and she would come home not like miserable, but she would come home just not happy. Like it was okay. Um, I'm like, is it terrible? She's like, no, it's just kind of terrible. Um, and we spent a lot of time trying to understand like what made it not as fun for her as the other camps. Um, she said the counselors are very active, which we figured out means the counselors like to like horse around a lot. Um, and like I, I mentioned, it's a it's the city parks and rec camp, so it's like a great deal, unlike some other camps. So we were very excited to to not pay an arm and a leg for camp. But I think with that comes like a different ratio of staff to kids. So I think she's just finding it chaotic. She has made some friends, but like today is day seven of camp and she was crying just as much as she was day one. And it was just breaking my heart. And so we... um are going to let her stop going and we're going to switch camps. And fortunately this other camp that she went to last summer has some open slots 
And so she's going to go to that for the next couple of weeks, starting next week. She'll spend a couple of days with grandma this week. She'll spend a day with me. Um, and like, I wanted it to be like this thing where I was like, okay, she's, she's learning resiliency. Like she's, she's learning how to be in spaces where she's not totally comfortable. This is a good thing. But after a certain point, it felt like, oh, I can't, I can't keep subjecting her to this sadness. What do you guys think? Exactly. You made the right decision. I was about to say after seven days, seven days is a pretty large sample size. Yeah. She gave it a, she gave it a real college try, right? Yeah. She gave the college try and she realized that it's not for her. And then I think any good parent would say, Hey, this is not a fit for my kid. I need to look around and try something different. I think so often the old school parenting is like, Oh, we started a commitment. We need to finish this commitment. It's uh -huh, like, no, uh -huh. no, it's just like, if you see that your kid is suffering and she's not, happy i think you made the right move you handled that brilliantly i mean kudos to you and your partner to like really understand like hey seven days like he said is a big sample size yeah. like we've had enough like let's just move on and also and not, and not to put this in your head or on your plate hey but there. amelia who's 13 really had a hard time adjusting to large environments like where there's mm -hmm. too many people around mm -hmm. the noise would bother her mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. was too busy for her and she would come home exhausted and cranky and crying mm -hmm. and it wasn't until we put her in a smaller um like you know less students less camp goers uh where she actually liked going to camp as opposed to the little one my youngest one who's like Hey, I, I wanna, if, if you could put me in the middle of a mosh pit, I'm going to be the happiest kid ever. Right. Um, so good for you. Good yeah, that for, resonates. Yeah, yeah good for resonates. you, man. Okay, thank you. You made me feel better about it. Oh. <laughs> well, on that note, we're going to take another quick break. See you back here for our listener question. We're back for our listener question. This actually comes from our Slate Parenting Facebook group. I'm not sure how to write this without sounding like a jerk, and I feel like a jerk about it too, but how do you handle feelings of disappointment about your child just being fine academically? My kid is almost seven and going into second grade. She's on track for both math and reading, but not excelling. It's required work to get her there, and sometimes I wish she just got things easily like her brother. I get so frustrated when she doesn't catch on to easy concepts, and she can tell. I definitely veer toward worst-case scenarios, but it doesn't appear that she has any learning challenges or severe enough to get services. But I keep feeling like I need to prepare myself to have a C student or a kid who doesn't go to college, and that seems really daunting. And yes, I've been to therapy, and yes, I was put under a bunch of pressure to do well in school as a kid, so I see that as the standard of success. How can I move forward in a positive direction? Signed, a recovering perfectionist parent. What do you say, Dwayne? Oh, wow. Um, I see it and I feel this parent's pain um, immensely. But growing up, I was a kid who was diagnosed with a learning disability. Uh, I still don't even know if it was a thing, but I had a really bad stuttering problem. I had a hard time reading and just dealing with reading comprehension and all that stuff. And I still had to deal with people telling me I was not smart enough, not good enough. And I was coming from all angles, not just, mm. you know. So I, I, what I would tell her is like, gosh, this is just the beginning. This kid is seven. Like the book is not written on her That's yet. Right. It's like we, we can't sit here and start pushing the panic button. I was, like I said, I was a slow reader. I did crappy in middle school. And then I ended up excelling in high school, went to one of the top colleges in the nation, graduated Dean's List, became a best-selling author and TED Talk speaker and business owner and all that stuff. So it's, you never know. Just have some grace with your daughter. She will figure it out in time. Yeah, um, if I can add on, you might have to look at this as a great opportunity to like find out what your kid actually excels at out of That's school it. and pour some love into that. My youngest has um, a really tough time with math, but she's like a whiz at editing video. It's crazy um so we put her in some online editing courses and she turned out to be like a little filmmaker it not only boosted her self-esteem but it was great to see her be proud of something 
that she wasn't getting graded on. She was like, wow, I worked so hard on this. And, and, and I could see it in her face and her demeanor. Like the, pr- like the pressure was lifted off her shoulders because she wasn't getting graded on editing this these little movies that she makes. And ever since we nurtured her creativity, maybe for this parent, she could find something or they can find something that their child loves. Her grades got better. And her coming home with a C in math, like, became a celebration for her. Because she realized, I'm putting just as much effort in editing these films as I am in math. But you know what? I'm a, I'm a C in math, you know? And it was really tough for her to deal with that because her, her sister, you know, there's a little competition between her and her sister. There's that. But she, like, I don't know. All the love and attention she puts into filmmaking, um, she was she's now applying it at school. And I'll mm. never forget, my mother once said to me, if your kid needs help with math, you get them a tutor, right? But don't forget them to get them a tutor if they're really good at something they love. For example, like get the, like set them up with like a, a film editing mentor as well. Yes, e- even absolutely. Even though they're great at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, even that's, though that's she's really great smart. at that. Like my yeah. mom was like, if you're getting her a tutor in math, then you need to enroll her in editing classes. You need to find uh-huh. her something, somebody that she can mm. look, look up to in, in the editing world. Um, because you you got to teach her, like, even if you're good at something, you still got to perfect it if you, if you want to be the best at it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I feel that it could really unlock something beautiful in your child. So might want to look into that frustrated recovering perfectionist parent (laughs) yeah yeah like i said this question came from the slate parenting facebook group and there's also some really good comments in there one of them comes from amanda a member of the group amanda said i would also say to be vigilant about being around other parents who talk about their own kids accomplishments in a way that is triggering for you because this is totally the parent's issue this is this is not your you know, this is the letter writer's issue. And I think that's really smart because there's all these external factors beyond the grade that your kid is bringing home that are making you feel this way. And that could totally be one of them. And then group member Samantha wrote, I don't encourage my kids to beat the other kids or get the A. I encourage them to beat themselves. So if they got a D on a science quiz and a C on the next one, I'd celebrate that. Not everyone is adept at school. My husband barely got through college because he didn't like school and now makes six figures and reads books on physics in a spare time. Education is important, but so is expanding your own interests, trying new things, and improving for yourself and your own knowledge, not because you want an A. Both um, really, really astute observations, I think. Yeah, and Zach, I think a lot of the kids who get A's are struggling as far as their mental health is concerned. They're not Mm -hmm. feeling good about themselves. They're like struggling in so many ways. They're depressed. They're spending all their time in therapy. It, so it's not just, I would tell this parent, it's not just the A. And Lucy mm-hmm. made the point, too, about like trying to make your kids better as far as they're, if they're excelling at something that get help. Like my kids are really good at basketball. I have them with a private coach that every Wednesday to, to foster that, too. But I think the, the main thing that this parent needs to work on is just to not take everything so seriously and just realize like it's a C or a bad grade or a D on something is not the end of the world. School is not for everyone. And and what you do in school is not going to make or break your success in life. Totally. And in a lot of cases, I don't know what school the letter writer's kid goes to, but in a lot of cases, like school's curricula just aren't built for today's world. Whereas like, you know, your kid is learning a new skill and, you know, Lucy, your kids learning editing. Like there's these websites like Masterclass, Skillshare. There's a thousand places to learn exactly what you're interested in. And um, the narrowness of, you know, math, science, whatever, social studies, reading that, that encapsulates, you know, I don't know, 10% of, of what there is to learn. So like encourage them, you know, right. We want to like encourage our kids to, to figure out how to become lifelong learners, not like how to get an A. Let your kid be a kid, you know, like just let them learn. Like just, I can't stand when we put all this pressure on these kids at such a young age. My eldest, you know, she she falls into this little loop of like, oh my God, I need to be in advanced science and I need to be in advanced civics and I need to be in advanced English. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. But what are you doing outside of that? Like, did you pick up your guitar today? 
Did you read your favorite book this morning? Like, what are we doing? Outside. Did you go outside and touch grass, as the kids say now, you know? <laughs> and she's looking at me. She's like, Mom, you're right. I'm like, yeah, like, relax. It'll all come eventually, you know, just be patient. Yeah. And I don't want to pile on this parent because I totally get it. It's hard to to do a lot of like unlearning of, of what we were taught as kids. But like you, you say, you, you definitely veer toward worst case scenarios. That's fine. But like, don't veer toward worst case scenarios around your kid. They don't need that added pressure. Yeah. And, and Zach, I think to the point, like, I really feel like we're in a world where I mentioned my kids, have, my both my kids are excelling at basketball. Yeah. You know, Lucy's talking about the video editing kid and all this stuff. None of this stuff really impresses me. I think the thing that impresses me is how good are you as a kid? Are you a kind person? Mm-hmm. Like if you are a good kid, like a nice person, that's how I'll judge you as a parent. Like, I don't care about your grades. I don't care if you can shoot three pointers. I don't care if you can edit for Steven Spielberg. Like, are you a good kid? Yeah. Like, yeah. Are you a good kid? And that's the thing that we really need to focus on. The rest will fall into place. If that, if you have a good kid in the world that we live in, that's so polarized mm. and so angry and evil right now. It's just, I'm mm. looking for people who are raising good yeah. kids. Yes, 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 yes. Well, we'd love to know your thoughts on perfectionism and how it enters your parenting world. You can email us at slate.com or leave us a voicemail at 646-357-9318. And of course, you can also go and join our Slate Parenting Facebook group. That's where this question comes from. There's, I think, like over 100 comments on this question alone. It's a really rich community. All you have to do is fill out like a quick three-question survey to let us know that you are a human person and not a bot. No bots allowed, sorry. But this is such a good question and we really appreciate it. That's it for our show. Please subscribe, leave a rating and review and tell your friends. This episode of Mom and Dad are Fighting is produced by Rosemary Belson and Maura Curry. Alicia Montgomery is VP of Slate Audio. For Lucy Lopez and Dween Richards, I'm Zach Rosen. Thanks for listening. <laughs>